Hey, what's up everybody? It's Matt from HowToMotorcycleRepair.com. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to inspect and replace swing arm bearings on your dirt bike. Alright guys, sipping some coffee here because it is 5 a.m. I'm out here for three reasons. Number one, I'm crazy. Number two, it's been 90s here all week in Chicago. It's late September. It's pretty uh, weird to have it at that temperature, but uh, you know, it's been pretty hot in the garage and with the studio lights and everything, it's been pretty miserable. So I just come out here in the morning. And number three, my daughter's one and she's teething and she's really difficult to put asleep. So that's why I'm out here right now. So I pretty much filmed this whole video at 5 a.m. before going to my day job. So I'm a little sleepy little uh haven't had my coffee yet but hey i got it done for you guys and it's a pretty good video so make sure you watch the whole thing okay so i noticed a couple things um i service a lot of bikes uh, and i buy a lot of used bikes and i always see that the linkage bearings down by the shock and in all the suspension and especially the swing arm bearings are often neglected and what i mean by that is people fail to take it apart every once in a while and lube the bearings up you know clean all the dirt out lube them up so it prolongs its life second and secondly a lot of people power wash their bikes and they they spray their wand right in this general area and it forces all the water and dirt into the bearings and therefore it shortens his life now even if you're watching this video and you get past the inspection of uh, looking for some play and your bearings check out fine Follow along with this video, take everything apart, and at least lube everything up so that way, you know, you get a little more life out of your bearings. Now, as far as bearing replacement, I'm going to show you three different methods. I'm going to use a bench vise, a C-clamp, and finally the press. A press is the best thing to use. However, a lot of guys uh, may not have a press, so you got the C-clamp and the vise method on bearing replacement, and it's not all that difficult. All the links to the tools and parts used in this video will be in the video description or you're going to see a link pop up right here. Just click on that. It'll send you to my site and I have all the information there for you as well. All right, let's go to the workbench and see what parts I'm using in this project. All right, so let's take a look at the parts that I'm using for this project. Uh, the swing arm bearing kit was purchased from Factory Links. They make quality parts in the OEM design. And what I mean by that is, if you look at this, uh, these parts here in this exploded diagram, the thrust bearing here it comes with a low friction needle thrust washer, or bearing, sorry. Some kits come with a plastic in replacement of the OEM design. So you definitely don't want that, you want this style. Now these are priced pretty well because if you price out all the OEM parts from Kawasaki, you're gonna pay about 130 bucks for all these parts that needed to, to rebuild the swing arm. These are priced much better, so it's, it makes sense to go with aftermarket parts for uh, a project like this. So let's go ahead and open this up, see what it comes with. A little sticker. So here are the OEM designed uh, thrust bearing, one per side, needle bearings, new collars, and four seals, and then here are the uh, sleeves and it's pretty cool that they package it with this uh, this webbing here so it doesn't damage the, the nice finish on the sleeve so this is everything you need to rebuild your swing arm I'll have a link in the video description if you want to check out uh, whether they have bearings for your bike now this particular kit covers the KX125 9905 and the KX250 9907. So you can see that it covers a wide range of years. All right, to check for swing arm play, what you want to do is have the bike on a lift or 
on a stand like I have here. And you want to move the wheel up and down and side to side and check for play up in this area. So you can just grab the wheel and move it and notice any play. I feel a little bit, not sure where it's coming from. I can't see because I'm way back here. So this really helps if you have two people or a crowbar. So what you can do is you can put the crowbar under the tire and move it and then you can come over here and view where the play is coming from. So since this is a swing arm video, I'm looking in the swing arm area to see if there's any play. And I don't see any. I actually see a little bit from the shock bearing. The shock bearing has 10 hours on it. It's kind of a poor design. Very little bearing area in there, so they often fail. And again, you can go side to side. Don't see any play there. All right, guys, so I'm zoomed in right here where the swing arm bolt goes. I'm going to do it again, and we'll see if we can see any play. So I'm going side to side. I don't see anything. Up and down. I don't see anything. So I think the bearings are good. However, are they greased? I'm going to take it apart and find out. Another spot is you can take your finger and just stick it in a tight area here and then do the same thing and see if there's any movement or displacement. You'll be able to notice it easier here than with your eye. So I don't feel anything and side to side. Yeah, I don't feel any movement. Let's get a closer look at what I think is moving down here. And I think it's the shock linkage or the shock bearing. Uh, you can see that I put a little paint mark there just so you can see it easier translating. Up, down, up, down. So that definitely needs to be addressed while it's apart. All right, guys, I want to show you an example of shot bearings. So if you look, there's some lateral play, axial play, side to side. And also, if I press it fore aft, there's play as well. So this is what shot bearings look like, and they definitely need to be addressed. All right, so let's go ahead and remove the chain. What I like to do is get the rear wheel at this position with the master link, and then I use a screwdriver to just lightly give this a tap. Pop off the master link. And you can remove the chain. Let's go ahead and remove the rear wheel. Start by undoing this cotter pin. Never ease them, throw them out. Get a new one. Go ahead and remove the rear wheel, slide the axle out. Don't lose the collars that are usually in here. While we're here, we'll zip off this mud flap. All right, time to remove the brake clips. They are packed with mud and sand and stuff like that. Um, the fastener heads are. So what you got to do is take a little pick and get that all out of there before you start trying to turn it because you'll strip it. And guys, these aren't Phillips screws. 
their Japanese JIS. So what I got is these vessel screwdrivers. They're freaking awesome. JIS bits, magnetic tip, and it has an impact driver built in. I love these screwdrivers so much that I have two sets. One in the toolbox and one at the workbench. So now we can take the caliper and just hang it out of the way. All right, here's a little tip. Don't do what I just did and push down on the brake lever. Back wheel's off. What's going to happen is your brake pads are going to come in and close up on you. So I'll show you a quick trick on how to address that because it happens all the time. I was just planning on pushing down on the brake pedal and getting the swing arm bolt out, but looks like we're going to have to remove it. So all right, that bolt doesn't really want to come out right now. So we'll just go ahead and undo the spring and that gives us enough clearance to remove the swing arm bolt. Let's loosen the swing arm bolt and nut. Now, if you're lucky enough, you can just push this out. Just like that, it moved. Because I maintained it about 10 hours ago and greased everything up. If yours doesn't come out, you can use a dowel and a hammer, but be careful not to damage the threads. If it's really stuck, I recommend that you would uh, soak everything with penetrating oil and just walk away for a day or two and revisit. Um, otherwise, you can drill and tap the other side and use a slide hammer. That usually works pretty well too. Let's remove this last piece of linkage right here. And go ahead and pull the swing arm out. All right, so let's take this apart. Here is the collar. So you can take that out. You can push the sleeve out. See a little bit of wear, but nothing crazy. Can use a seal puller to remove the seals. Now let's pull out all these parts here. All right, so what do we have here? A washer, thrust bearing, and another washer. And here is the needle bearing that we're gonna press out. Looks like it's in a cage. Sometimes these are just cageless and they're all just packed in there and sometimes you lose them. So it's nice that these are in a cage. And also you'll note that this bearing is pressed in to be flush with this shoulder. So reassembling this should be pretty easy. You just press it in until it's flush here and, and we're good to go. So just re repeat the disassembly of the sleeve and the seals and the thrust bearing on this side. All right guys, so we're gonna press one side of the bearing out on this vise here. This is a good old American vise. It's very heavy duty. However, 
when you're cranking these out, only use the bar that's on the vise. Don't put a cheater bar on here. Vices are not designed for that. Um, also, I have these aluminum plates here so it doesn't mar everything up because my jaws are pretty, uh, pretty sharp. So, over here, I found an impact socket that is just slightly smaller than the OD of the bearing. And we're going to press it out about halfway and then we'll do another setup. But for now, let's get this in here. Alright, so it's ready to go, however, we're going to apply a little bit of heat to make things go easier. Now the aluminum is going to expand more so than the steel, so hopefully it should just release it a little bit. So we'll just give this a few minutes of heat. Okay, it's starting to move. I'm just gonna keep going with the heat. Okay, I think I'm bottomed out here. So we gotta get another socket on here. All right, so you can see the bearing, you can see the bearing has come all the way out. Now we gotta put a bit large socket over here to accept the bearing. Really running out of throw on my vise here. All right guys, so I ran out of throw on my vise. I couldn't get a socket in here and a socket here and have the jaws come in and compress it. So another option is you can continue with the socket, you can get a large socket to accept the bearing and we'll use a C-clamp to sandwich this all together. So I got a huge C-clamp here. Let's go ahead and set this up. Alright guys, for the other bearing we're going to use a vise, just to give you multiple methods of 
popping the bearings out. And this method is definitely going to be easier. Um, so first of all, I have the socket to accept the bearing. The bearing's in here. I'm going to drop this socket and extension through this part, which doesn't have a bearing. And we're just going to press it out just like that. So let's go ahead and get this set up. And there it goes, like butter. I really need to get an air over hydraulic jack for this guy. So now it's time to solvent wash everything and do yourself a favor and take your new bearings and pop them in the freezer so they'll be ready to install. All right guys, so I cleaned up the swing arm with some solvent in my solvent tank, both sides. These bores are completely clean. Um, I have the bearings sitting in a freezer and the idea here is to get the bearing started nice and square with this socket and I'm just gonna press it in and you can see I need to press it down to this shoulder of this counter bore and that's it. So I'll do this one with the C-clamp. I'll heat it here, put it in with the C-clamp and then this one here we'll do with the press. And I'll put a little bit of oil on here just so it helps the bearing slide in. We'll heat this up for a few minutes. All right, I got one of these IR guns. Let's see what we're at here. So we're at 280 degrees. That's awesome. That's going to work well. totally on the bearing but it is going in nice so that's why the press is so nice but I do want to show you how to do this So you can see we're completely flush there. That looks good. All right, we're gonna have to get a little crafty with this one. Uh, I think I'm gonna put the bearing here. Right over the swing arm. Get it squared up. Sock it in here. Pass your extension through, through there. And I really wish I had that error over hydraulic jack so I can just take up all this slack because this is going to take a few minutes for sure. And I hope I have enough travel in my... Here, let's do this real quick. Stack that up. A socket under there. Get it all centered up. Drive it home.
Here's a closer look of the bearing pressed in. You can see that it's completely flush on this shoulder on both sides and we're, uh, we're good to go. All right guys, time to load up the needle bearings here with some grease. I like to use Bellray waterproof grease. Go ahead and just pack it in there. Rotate it so it fills all the voids. Put some on the shoulder here. All right, next load up the washers. Uh, notice that there's a rounded side and a flat side. Flat side towards the needle bearing. I'll just give it a little more surface area. And load this guy up with grease. Again, flat side. towards the needle bearing. Spin that around, that all looks good. All right, take the large seal and time to install it. You can see I can just install it with my fingers here. And give it a little push with the, with the socket if you want. Make sure it's nice and square. Okay, and load up the seal lips with grease. Pop a collar in. Make sure you didn't roll the lip anywhere. Thing looks good there. Next up, take your small seal here and put a little bit of oil around it if you need to, just so installation's easier. And by the way, there's an open side and a closed side. You want the closed side facing out. All right, guys, once that seals in, you can load it up with grease. Pop your sleeve in and make sure you don't roll the lip of the seal. Make sure it's nice and... All right, so that side's done. Grease this one up. Put your washer in, followed by your thrust. And your washer. your seal in.
put some grease on the seal lip. And drop your collar in. And put your seal in here. These smaller ones are a little tougher to get in. Okay, it's definitely in at an angle. So what I can do is pry up on it gently with a big screwdriver and try not to damage the seal. Just pop it up a little bit and it'll push the other side down. There we go, straightened it out a little bit. Seal's not damaged. <laughs> All right. Load it up with grease. All right, now we can put this back in the bike. All right, guys, so getting ready here for assembly. I solvent washed all these components here. And one thing you want, you're going to want to look at is your axle for your wheel and your swing arm. And you just want to see if there's any uh, corrosion on there or any imperfections. And if so, you want to take a little bit of crocus cloth and just polish it up a little bit. These look pretty good, but we'll just give it a quick wipe. Just run your fingers over it, make sure it's nice and smooth. There's something right here, a little bit of pitting and some and whatnot. So let's just go ahead and focus on that area. Nice and smooth. And then take a little bit of, of grease and just smear a thin film all over it. That way it'll be easy to remove in a year or in about 10 to 20 or 30 hours, depending on how and where you ride your bike. This one I already polished up. All right guys, time to install the swing arm. Uh, it would be a good idea to take this linkage all apart and re-grease everything and inspect it as well and make sure um, you're in good shape there since it's all apart. Uh, but that's not the purpose of this video. We're doing swing arm bearings. So let's go ahead and install this. So have your swing arm axle ready to go. be a tight fit. Rotates nice and smooth. Now let's go ahead and install the swing arm nut. And per the manual on this model, it's 72 foot-pounds, so make sure you torque it down. All right, guys, so now the swing arm bolt is torqued down, and what I'm doing is I'm just pivoting it. It is super smooth. There is no movement side to side or fore aft, so these bearings are super tight. They're lubed up. They're brand new. We're good to go. All right, let's hook up the lower link here. Put the bolt in here so we wouldn't lose everything. My model has these washers here. I'm just gonna put a dab of grease on it so it sticks in place.
Okay, torque this one down, 61 foot-pounds. Make sure you torque everything on these linkage components. Go ahead and reinstall your little mud flap here. Okay, we can take our caliper. Slide it back in here. Now remember, I squeezed the brake lever on accident and <laughs> you know what happens. So what you can do is just stick a screwdriver in here and turn it. So I'm turning the screwdriver this way and just walk the pads back in. And just give it, you know, let it walk a little bit, let go, and the pads will just walk back in. And do it slowly, there's going to be a little bit of resistance. So now we've got the pads wide open here. I fit the rotor in there. Okay, let's install the brake line clips. All right, time to install the rear wheel. Make sure you have your collars installed. I cleaned up the seals and re-greased them. All right, so we have two collars to line up and gotta get the rotor inside the brake pads. So that's that's what we got to do here. So I have my axle ready. Let's go ahead and slide it in. All right, guys, uh, put on your adjustment block here, followed by your washer and your nut. Go ahead and tighten it down, torque it to factory spec, make sure one of the cotter pin hole lines up. So I just go to the hardware store and grab a whole bunch of cotter pins. I got a ton of them. So let's just find one here that'll fit nice. That one looks pretty good. Right, let's put the brake lever back together. Hook up your spring. It'd be a good idea to take this bolt out and re-grease it. I recently have done that though. Go ahead and pump up your brakes because we did have a little slop in the brake pads. Spin the rear wheel and make sure your brake is functioning properly. Okay, last part, I have my chain fed through. Put your master link in. Followed by the plate. and the clip. So I usually put it right there. Give it a nice pop with a screwdriver. Boom, we're done with this job. Hey guys, if you'd like to support how-to motorcycle repair and creating more videos such as this one, check out my Patreon page and see if you can help me out. 
You can also buy me an ice cold beer or two by clicking on the link. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.